Love is Blind is back and is more eye-opening than ever. We have breakups, we have lying, maybe some infidelities. The type of stuff that justifies Netflix upping their monthly prices every minute. The standard price right now is $15, but by the end of this video, I bet you it's gonna be $15,000. But, uh, you know, let's meet the cast for this season. Starting off, we have one of the more iconic Love is Blind characters in a bit. Matt? Yeah, he's definitely one of a kind. You pick the number and then you get a corresponding question. Number four, please. This one's been requested a couple times. It would try to be something different. What about you? You know, I was just going to ask the questions. I wasn't really anticipating getting the same one back. <laughs> Superman had a cold personality to start off to. No, he, he really didn't. And wow, you must really think highly of yourself if you're going to compare yourself to Superman. Literally the strongest superhero ever made. And that's just like, yeah, just like that guy. Maybe even a little stronger. You're going to be judged is always a little bit, you know, scary. However, I think also being in like, you know, Everyday life, people judge too. You know? Are you there? <laughs> what? Wow. Man, I wish I could ignore social norms like this guy. Matt's the type of person that would just like walk past everyone that's waiting in line so he can be in the front. Yeah, amusement parks hate this guy. So Matt's a little socially awkward, but he is into this one woman AD, which is short for Amber. Now I know it might be surprising that anyone's into Matt because, you know. Everyday life, people judge too. But for some reason, AD is uh, really into him. AD's a really nice person. She's probably my favorite cast member of this season, which really isn't saying that much because a lot of these people are not too amazing to put that in the nicest way I can. But Matt and AD grow a close bond and Matt talks about how special their relationship is. What I'm saying to you, I'm not saying to anybody else. Until we realize that Matt has been saying sweet nothings to another girl so I'm not gonna lie here, when I first saw that this woman's name was also Amber, I legit thought, is it possible that Matt didn't realize that there were two separate Ambers in the pods and he thought he was just talking to one of them this entire time? But no, it's nothing fun like that. He was just, you know, playing with these women. He was saying he wanted to like propose to both of them, I guess. So yeah, you know, not... Not the coolest thing to do on this show. Like everything you said to me today, he said to me yesterday. Makes me feel icky because he did the same thing to me. So yeah, Matt's a douche and AD throws him to the curb, which really sucks for Matt because it's raining outside. But AD pairs up with this guy named Clay. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't really like him much either. Clay's ego gets completely shattered when he finds out that AD is considering Matt over him. Well, what love triangle am I in? We could have that transparent convo. Um, it's me and you and Matthew. Matt, I don't even, Matthew? Oh my fucking God. Okay. Really, it's like my ego is like fucking with me so hard, but I'm really trying to be very understanding and work with you on this. Damn, dude, calm down. You know, the whole point of the show is to sort of date around. <laughs> you must be terrible at speed dating. It's like my ego is like fucking with me so hard. Clay also wants to know what AD's physical appearance looks like. I just have to be attracted to you. Naturally, I, I would say I kind of lean towards more like the T. My, my favorite attribute is like lips, butt and all that stuff. That sounds like so shallow and all that, but like caring what your best attributes are. If, if I'm a proposed, that's something I need to know. You really picked the best show to be on. Clay and AD get engaged and Clay just immediately starts snuggling up into uh, <laughs> AD's body. Can I, can I, can I like lay on the chest on you? You know what I mean? You're a baby. No, I'm gonna be baby. Uh, <laughs> cool. Then we have Laura and Jeremy. Jeremy? Ah, who cares? <laughs> These two are extremely bland. The one thing I can tell you about Jeremy is that he likes uh, Hawaiian shirts. I almost wore a Hawaiian shirt in here today. Okay, what's the Hawaiian shirts for? Uh, I just fuck with Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> and I feel like he tailors the conversation to what he thinks the other person wants to hear. Like he goes from saying he would never do this experiment ever again. It has been a unique experience. I will tell you, I don't think I would do this again. And not even 10 seconds later, he agrees with the woman he's talking to saying that it's been one of the best experiences he ever had. Honestly, like I genuinely think it's been one of the best experiences of my life. 
I agree. I, I 100% agree on that. Jeremy talks about the Love is Blind experience like how I talk about McDonald's. Like, yep, I totally hated that. Terrible experience. I'll probably do it again in the near future. And I could not tell you one thing about Laura except that she's blonde. Then the next couple we have is Amy and Johnny. And this is the couple you're supposed to root for the entire time. And when these two first meet, they just start going at it. Yeah, I didn't think the US version of Love is Blind would be so French. But they are a good couple and, you know, there's just not a lot to talk about with them. It is weird how Love is Blind always has one couple like this. Jimmy and Chelsea, on the other hand, are not a, not a great couple. Chelsea is extremely desperate to find a man and has gone to great lengths to try and find one. I've even tried going to like Home Depot. There might be a man there. <laughs> okay, this this is important. Did you try and find a man inside the Home Depot or outside the Home Depot? Or did you just realize that Home Depot's stud finder uh, wasn't for men? <laughs> and Jimmy's just sort of a doofus. There's one point where Jimmy bites his lip and he uses that as an excuse on why he can't tell Chelsea he loves her. I'm not gonna be able to tell you I love you every single hour of the day just because I'm working from home. I love you and I, I really wanna make things work, but honestly, I bit the living shit out of my lip and it freaking, it hurts to talk. Are you serious, man? Like a five-year-old could come up with a better excuse than that. Like if you bite your lip at your wedding, are you not gonna be able to say, I do? I bit the living shit out of my lip. It is tough though, because I feel like Jimmy was unintentionally misled by Chelsea because she says that people often tell her that she looks like Megan Fox. MG, I don't even know if it's MGK's wife or her, his girlfriend. Megan Fox? Did you saying you look like Megan Fox? Which, I'm sorry, but no. But this sets the expectations way too high for Jimmy because he's like expecting a movie star level woman to come out and meet him. <laughs> she definitely she definitely lied to me on, on some uh, how she looked. Chelsea told me she looked like Megan Fox. You know, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. I, I'm very attracted to her. I, I can work with that. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Jimmy also has the problem of liking the taste of his own foot in his mouth. Really thought a lot this morning about what I wanted. And like, yeah. I almost went home this morning. Why would you say that? There's no reason to admit that. I would call these two a train wreck, but I, I feel like it's a bigger disaster than that. So our five couples go to the Dominican Republic where they, you know, celebrate their honeymoon. Oh wait, there is another couple, uh, Kenneth and Brittany. Totally forgot about them and, uh, so did the show. The first six episodes of this 13 episode season all take place in the pods. And I'm not gonna lie to you, in those first six episodes, Kenneth and Brittany maybe have like 15 minutes worth of screen time. I don't have the specific numbers in front of me, nor do I care enough to figure that out. But let me tell you their entire love story. When they get out of the pods, Kenneth is too addicted to his phone to pay attention to Brittany. You, you can use it on our bathroom to get ready. How you feeling? Cause you know, I'm ecstatic, but how are you? <laughs> miss this so much. I miss my device. And then out of nowhere, he decides that, you know, this, it's not gonna work out. This is not going to work. But I do want you to find the person you were actually supposed to be with. Give me a hug so you know it's no beef. Damn, that, that's gotta be the most casual breakup I've ever seen. When I first watched this, I legit thought I accidentally skipped a scene because this just, it, it comes out of nowhere. I'll be honest though, I think Kenneth just wanted to re-download all those dating apps so he could spend more time on his phone. Miss this so much. So we are now down to four couples. Yay. Honestly, not a lot happens on the honeymoon trip except a few people objectify AD. That woman is, does, is absolutely... Stacked. Hey, D. Bean dip? Not the bean dip. I said, Jimmy, do it when walking. 
fucking, she will literally no, die. She like, told me she to do it, dude. I was like, die. I'm gonna get fucking canceled. Do not. I will <laughs> no, fight absolutely. you. What a bunch of likable people, am I right? I am surprised AD had such a good trip because her fiance does not make it any easier. Because Clay doesn't want AD to get fat and has a really thought out way of motivating her. I wouldn't even let you get like out of shape. Yeah, but what if I do get like? I'll tell you. Mm. How about AD get in that motherfucking joke? And if you think getting pregnant is an excuse for Clay, you would be wrong. At some point we're gonna have children. Yeah, you like it right. And I'm gonna have a belly yeah, and like- and I would be in the gym with you every day. Dude, do you realize how insane that take is? Like you're gonna gain weight, like that's just science. And it's not like even after you have the baby, it's gonna be easy to lose the weight. It might be tough, AD, but like, are good trainers easy on you? Honestly, though, like, are good trainers easy on you? Okay, yeah, so you're just, you're just a dick. Clay does sort of apologize for that, but I mean, I feel like you said how you felt. Clay is very worried about his and AD's relationship, and his biggest fear is that he's gonna cheat on AD because I guess Clay's dad cheated on his mom a lot. I will say Clay's dad does sound like a piece of shit. Infidelity was a thing, and like, my dad would take me with him to yeah. some of his infidelity trips. Dude, what? Did someone not tell Clay's dad that father-son bonding time is more like, you know, throwing a baseball and not taking them to your affairs? Like, what an absolute scumbag. Like, ugh. You know, let's move to something slightly more pleasant. Jimmy and Chelsea. They are on different pages, to say the least. You can tell that Chelsea is very worried about her relationship with Jimmy. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's gonna, like, see my closet. But also, I haven't been there in three weeks, so if there's, like, a little dust bunny, like, is he gonna call off the wedding. <laughs> Jimmy just pulls him out. He walks in and sees that there's dust bunnies everywhere. He's like, yep, all right, see you later. Gay life people judge too. But when it comes down to it, Jimmy's just not that into Chelsea. They have a conversation about how Jimmy doesn't show enough affection to Chelsea, and it all leads to Jimmy saying that he thinks uh, Chelsea's a bit too clingy. Truthfully, you've been a little clingy. Clingy? Oh boy, you have sent off the nukes, my dude. This is the same conversation where Jimmy says like, oh, I can't tell you I love you too much because I bit my lip. You know, that's two strikes and I'm about to tell you, strike three is the worst one to come. And you say I'm too clingy, and then went upstairs and had sex with you? And I'm too clingy? No, this is bullshit. This is fucking bullshit. Well, if you're gonna bring up the sex, you're the one that wanted to have sex. Yeah, I also, did. maybe wanted a little breather from that too. Oh my fucking god. You know, it's honestly impressive how much of his foot he can put in his mouth. So this all leads to a huge fight, which, you know, of course it did. I'm like, I'm so disgraced, but like, I'm so fucking tired of this. And the next day, Jimmy's like, no, babe, I just like totally love having sex with you. I didn't mean I didn't want to have sex with you. What I meant to say was, is you initiated it. And I am happy you initiated it, so please don't. <laughs> He's like, don't discontinue initiating it. Yeah, that was an amazing save there, Jimmy. Laura and Jeremy are still adapting to one another, but there's one thing that Laura just can't get over. And yes, it's the Hawaiian shirts. He does this thing with Hawaiian shirts, which is not my favorite, but it was like he was doing it to like be silly. Yeah. There's a whole closet upstairs that I'm like, well, well, I don't want to take his Hawaiian shirts from him. You can take them. <laughs> What's your problem, man? Do you hate like the state of Hawaii or something? You feel like we shouldn't have gone into World War II because of them? You wish we had just stayed neutral? Everyone else likes the Hawaiian shirts, especially Jeremy's other girl he dated in the pod, Sarah Ann, who Jeremy hung out with till 5 a.m., which is a totally normal thing to do when you're engaged. You're just hanging out in the parking lot at Lost and Town till five something in the morning. You're denying leaving the bar. I don't want to talk about that right this second. No, dude, if you don't want to have a conversation, you just get up and leave. Gay life, people judge too. So it's not explicitly said, but it is strongly hinted that Jeremy did sleep with Sarah Ann. Jeremy lies throughout this entire conversation and then gets caught lying. Where were you? In the parking lot. You were north of Uptown, which is where Sarah Ann lives. Yeah, man, uh, not looking good. So they end up breaking up at a barbecue. Everybody can feel the tension between us at this point, and can we at least just put it aside for today? I do want to try and have a good time with the people that are around here. Why the fuck is that your concern? Honestly, fair point. Jeremy's like, dude, you're like totally harsh in the vibe. Like, yes, we just ended our engagement, but I still want to enjoy this hot dog. So after all this, Jeremy decides to go jet skiing with the woman he almost certainly cheated on with. All right, it's official, Laura is 
never going to Hawaii. Which is not my favorite. How are the other couples doing, you may ask? Well, Amy and Johnny are doing so well. Other couples are agreeing like, yeah, no, but they're the best couple here. Have you met our strongest couple right now? Hey. Gee, I wonder how this relationship's gonna end. Chelsea and Jimmy go on a date to an amusement park that is a literal ghost town. What's your favorite ride here? <laughs> Roller coasters are so my thing. I feel like this is the start of a Scooby-Doo episode where Chelsea gets kidnapped and Jimmy's just like, oh no, someone stole my fiance. I guess I can't get married. And if you thought these two were done fighting, uh, you you would be wrong. Chelsea goes on a drunk rant to Jimmy about multiple things. You, you don't think that I care about you just because I want to go out and like uh, have one drink just to make an appearance for a friend and come right back? That's not the kind of person I want to be with. Who are you with? I know it was Jack. Jacob Lee West. I was not with Jess. I've never saw Jess. I heard it was Jess. I think you're fishing. I think you're fishing. You think I'm fishing? Yeah. You know, it's a mess. I don't really want to talk about all the messy details, but it, she's just insecure about this relationship. But it does get into such a mess where I do start feeling bad for Jimmy, which after everything I've just shown, it says a lot. But when these guys come up on screen, it makes me really want to just pull out my hair. All right, Chelsea and Jimmy made me pull out my hair, but you know, luckily I feel like I did it, you know, pretty evenly. So back at the amusement park, we get a bombshell and no, it's not Megan Fox. And I, I want a relationship with you and I want us to work so bad. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to go to the altar. Woof. Fitting that Jimmy and Chelsea broke up at an amusement park because their relationship was a roller coaster. Yeah, these two were probably one of the worst couplings in this show's history. So we started off with five couples and now we're down to two. In another shocking turn of events on Amy and Johnny's wedding day, they get married. I know, who could have seen that coming? AD and Clay's wedding doesn't have a happy ending. AD, I love you. I don't think it's responsible for me to say I do. All right, I, I don't like Clay, but let's be honest, he wasn't ready for marriage. And the show always shames contestants who don't want to go into a marriage with someone they've only known for a month. That being said, I feel like Clay could have at least given AD a heads up. <laughs> Clay's reasoning for not getting married too really emphasizes how, like, how, how do I say it? He, he doesn't understand how big of an event this is. A lot of the work that needed to be done was my emotional empathy side. I guess for me, I didn't understand the magnitude of the decision. You didn't understand the magnitude of your decision? Do you hear the words that are coming out of your mouth, man? Yeah, you really do need to work on your emotional empathy. You know, hopefully we can find a therapist that won't go easy on you. Are good trainers easy on you? Honestly, though. Well, uh, this is going to be a fun reunion. So, yeah, that was a fun reunion, you know, if, if you watched the whole show. But the reunion did focus on things that, you know, overall didn't matter to the show. Like they bring back some married couples from Love is Blind, which is fine, but they bring back Matt and Colleen. And for those who don't know, I just don't like Matt. This guy would get drunk and just start screaming and yelling at his fiance, Colleen, and no one ever called him out for it. To say the least, there are many couples you can celebrate for being on Love is Blind. Matt and Colleen, or specifically Matt, should not be celebrated. Jeremy and Sarah Ann are together, so I guess she likes pineapple on pizza, you know? Because cause that's Hawaiian style. And Jer Jeremy wears Hawaiian shirts. Yeah, and not getting it? No? Okay. Well, uh, just like my jokes, Jeremy and Sarah Ann's relationship doesn't sound like it's doing great. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Every time I see him, they're broken up. Yeah. <laughs> you said they're broken. I, I love that guy's reaction to this news. He's like, oh my God, these two may not have the best relationship. So Sarah Ann made this TikTok talking about how this whole show is just made for entertainment and they put it on during the reunion. Let's take a look at that clip so everyone has a context. This is a reality television. It is meant to entertain you. And I think that's exactly what we're doing. We didn't miss with this one, baby. We didn't miss. And, and I'll clarify that right now, probably take it out of context. That was, to be quite frank, to put out entertainment of my own. Uh, okay, so a few things. One thing, definitely not taken out of context at all. I, I watched her original video. This was all the context you needed. And I love that the show is so petty that they blurred out Sarah Ann's handle. And her reasoning for making this TikTok is just like, guys, come on, I, I wanted some clout. While this is all going on, Nick Lachey says this too. So. Be very, very clear about this right now. Was this all just for entertainment? 
Sarah Ann, we've already talked about your suggestion that this is just done for entertainment. Guys, I just want to say participating in Love is Blind, it's really a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Vanessa and I believe in it from season one on. You can see the results. Look around this room. The absolute audacity, man. Love is Blind is notorious for their editing tricks that sort of border on deceptive at times. For example, this one TikTok user, Avery Brian one See, I don't blur out handles. So they point out this one scene from this season where they overlay a conversation between Clay and AD, where you can see the line on where the overlay is happening, and then another pair of Clay's fingers just pop out of nowhere. So these guys are literally doing editing tricks for entertainment's sake. And the fact that Nick Lachey is trying to say that this literal show is not for entertainment, but for true love is just... Speaking of Clay, him and AD don't seem to be together, but Clay has done some self-work and seems to be doing better. So I have to say, good job, Clay. You know, I wish there was another Love is Blind contestant that uh, did the same thing. And in one of the more weirder moves of the reunion, we don't get a lot of Chelsea or Jimmy. Like, yeah, they talk, but not too much about their own relationship, and we don't even get an indication if they're together or not. Which is weird, because they were like the vocal point of this whole season, and then in the reunion, they just sort of get forgotten. But, you know, that's pretty much it with this season and the reunion. I will definitely say this season was more entertaining than last season, but... You know, that's a pretty low bar. Anyways, that's it for today. Make sure to do the YouTube-y things, like and subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one.